Hello, this is Chi, Maria, and Peter, and welcome to our video. We are Group 40, and we would like to talk about our design build project. Throughout this video, we will present our 3D design for the cell measuring device, the programming aspects, building the prototype, using it in our experiment, and lastly, the data we have gathered. First of all, I will guide you throughout all the designs we made until we accomplish our final design and explain the logic behind it. So this is our first design and it consisted of holes in the cavette holder to make it semi-stable for the LED and the sensor to work. As time passed, we realized this was not the most effective design, therefore we moved to our second design. On our second design, uh, we put a little more thought into it and make it a more practical as the first one because we found a way to secure the cavette for a higher stabilization and both the LED and the diode sensor so that the, our results would be more correct. For our last and final design, we refined our second design so we would be able to diminish the errors even more and also to increase the stability of the cavette and therefore the sample. For our lid, we made a sliding lid so it would be easier to put on and to take it out. The components are fitted sideways to ensure that we do not pull any cables and jeopardize the experiments. We will now show you an animation of our design. Here is the setup of our device. The device consists of the Ada Fruit 32, a button, three LEDs, and a photodiode. To start the device, simply hold down the button when the device connects to a power source. In retrospect, it is clear that the wiring could be improved by arranging all the necessary GPIO ports on the same side of the board. Another way to improve the design would be having a switch instead of a button. This way we could start and stop recording data according to a switch rather than relying on a timer. The red and green LEDs are added for the sake of convenience. This way the user could know easily if the program is running or not. This is a Python program used for measuring. From line 1 to line 19, it is simply to set up the LEDs, photodiode and the button. The PWM duty is set according to this graph and we've Use the value that is around two thirds of the maximum value at 400. A while loop is used for the measuring function, which depends on the number of measurements to be done and the delay between each measurement. From line 40 to 41, several measurements are taken and then the average is stored. This is to ensure the reading at that particular instance is accurate. Since the LED is also technically blinking, we've also added a statement where it prevents a zero reading as to not skew the data. Line 71 and 72 is simply there so that when the button is pressed and when it is booting up from a power source, it runs a measuring function. As you can see, on the left is our budding yeast solution of over the weekend, as well as the setup of our device with the 3D printed holder on top of the magnetic stair. Next are some photos of our yeast cells under different magnifications. Here is the ADC chart of our 50 hour experiment. And this is the OD chart. From the OD chart, we observe an exponential growth within the first 26 hours. After 26 hours, we observe a sharp increase with a peak of 2.8 at the 30th hours. Then a sharp decrease leading to a plateau. Then finally a sharp increase at the 40th hour and the last 10 hours of data is just simply noise. This is most likely caused by the inefficient stirring as seen before with the cultivated yeast. The yeast settled down to the bottom half of the cuvette. For this data analysis, we will only be focusing on a time range between 8 and 16 hours as that is the typical time range of exponential growth for the yeast cells. From here, we can determine that the doubling time is approximately 4.25 hours. With the semi-log method, we naturally observe a linear relationship between ln to OD and time with quite a lot of noise. Here is the growth rate calculated using instantaneous differentiation, where we calculate the difference in OD between each consecutive reading, divided by the delay. 
As you can see, this fits quite logically with our first OD chart, with sharp increase and decrease in growth rates at corresponding times. Sadly, this doesn't mean much since we'll only be focusing on the aforementioned interval. Here we can see the growth rate chart between 8 to 16 hours. Though fitting a trend line would still be difficult due to the noise, it can still be said quite confidently that the growth rate is increasing corresponding to the exponential increase of the OD value. Looking at the chart, we could read off of the graph and realize the maximum growth rate occurred after 14.25 hours, with a growth rate of 0 0.54. However, we should still be cautious of the reading, since the data appears to be quite noisy. We could alternatively try to fit a trend line, but the highest R squared value was 0 0.377 for linear trend line. This was the rows of our group. Thank you for watching our video. We would like to give a special thanks to Christopher Workman for helping us with the data analysis by providing insight on our OLED chart uh, and what part is best suited for analysis and helping us with the with a minor programming issue. We also like to thank other Heist Cannon for providing uh, guidance on the lab procedure of cultivating the budding yeast solution and also how to properly fabricate the microscope. We also f like to thank either the TA for helping with the PWM and photodiode setup. And thanks to Noyus and Ivan, the TAs, for resolving the programming issue OS error 28 and 36. Lastly, we want to thank David, who's from another major, for helping us with the CAD.